Views and opinions expressed within the following program are solely those of the individual. These views and opinions do not necessarily represent those of Shaw TV. Hey Calgary, I'm Kevin Chorney. It's January 9th and this is Calgary Now. For the majority of people in the first world, debt is just another part of adult life. It begins with credit cards, maybe student loans and or car loans, and eventually a mortgage. We try to do what we should do, pay more than the minimum payments and pay off our loans quickly. But, as many can attest, it's very easy for our debt to spiral out of control. It's no secret that the cost of tuition, cars and houses rise at a faster pace than salaries and so incurring debt becomes inevitable. For Canadians, we see what's happening in other countries. Economies crashing, companies going bankrupt, and houses being foreclosed on, and we hope we can avoid the same fate. As our national household debt level rises, what more can we do to pay down our debt? Are the challenges of managing debt more or less difficult for the younger generations than baby boomers? All right, so it's that time of the year when the credit card balance can balloon to an uncomfortable level. Whatever the reason may be, for many people, if a purchase can be justified, it will be made. Consumer goods are purchased at a stratospheric pace in Canada, and especially wealthy Calgary. Instant gratification seems to be the name of the game for a lot of us, and that usually means if we want something, we're going to get it, regardless of the increased debt we'll incur. In fact, the average Canadian carries over $27,000 in consumer debt. That's not including a mortgage. From young people to old, carrying debt seems to be as Canadian as maple syrup. Banks and credit card companies are more than happy to reap the benefit of our appetite to purchase, resulting in billions of dollars in revenue. So why all the spending? Is it our culture to live beyond our means? And what about those ridiculously high credit card interest rates? My guests and I are sitting down to discuss in just a moment. Throw us your two cents on Twitter at Calgary Now Show to join the discussion. And to get the ball rolling, let's check out the rant pack. I think debt in this society, it affects different generations and different sectors of the population differently. I know I myself, I was really dumb going through school, I was desperate to pay for it, so whatever loan I could get, I would use that to pay for school and after a while I found myself in a lot of trouble because student loans don't work the same way as bank loans or student lines of credit. This information I had no idea about at the time. And also coming from an immigrant family, you see different situations with how we view credit and how we view cash because where we're from, cash is king for most people. Hey Calgary, thanks for joining us. Tonight we are happy to have Carolyn Davis from Momentum joining us once again, as well as Brian Betts from Money Mentors. Thanks to the both of you for being here. Uh, Brian, maybe we'll start with you. Tell us uh, briefly about yourself and, uh, well, Momentum. Pardon me, uh, Money Mentors. Well, uh, Money Mentors is a not-for-profit organization. Uh, we've been in existence for about 18 years now, and I've been there for a little over 12. Yeah. I'm a counselor. Uh, I've done a lot of things. Previous background, uh, spent over 20 years in banking, so financial industry uh, experience, which has uh, carried over well into my uh, current role at Money Mentors. So. Hence, perfect guest. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Thank you. Carolyn, uh, again, tell us about yourself and your role over at uh, Momentum. That sounds good. My name's Carolyn. Um, I've been at Momentum for about five years, and um, prior to that was working in microcredit in developing countries, and so brought that knowledge of microcredit back home to Calgary. And um, at Momentum, we work with people who live on low incomes to build their assets and exit poverty, whether that's through money management strategies, yeah helping them um, start and launch their own business, or maybe to build their skills so they can work in the trades. Very good, very good, thanks for being here. So guys, it's that time of year, right? I mean, Christmas spending has finally commenced, everyone's taking a look at their, their credit card bill. Uh, is it that bad this time of year? I mean, are people really hurting? Are people spending far too much at Christmas still? Mm. Is it happening? You know, I think one of the things is uh, it's, it's your money. I mean, nobody can tell you how much is the right amount to spend at Christmas. Some people spend a lot. Some people spend a little. Yeah. Uh, we have a great uh, community information session that tells people how to spend less if that's what they're interested in doing. Sure. But I think the more important thing for us, and maybe you see it as well, Carolyn, is that people have a plan. And we always talk about annual expenses, okay, whether they're car repairs or vacation or Christmas or whatever. It's putting money aside every month of the year so that you're prepared for Christmas and the, the expenses don't go on the credit card. And that you factor in 
okay, the entertaining, the alcohol, the extra food, the transportation yeah. or whatever. But you have a plan, you stick to that plan, and you can afford what yeah. you're spending. So that's the, that's the smart play. That's mind, the smart play. Mind you, that's not always the case, clearly. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been said, well, apparently it's fact that average, average Canadians carry over $27,000 in consumer debt. I thought that was a staggering number. I guess when you think about it, though, that would include things like, like cars, mm -hmm. right? So just for our viewers, what exactly, uh, how would you define consumer debt? What does it include? I would include things that are not um, appreciating assets. So I would exclude my house from consumer debt. Yeah. Um, but other things, I, what I want to emphasize is that the consumer debt number may not always just be the toys. Mm -hmm. It can also include groceries for people who are really sure. struggling to make ends meet. It sure. can include some essentials as well. Um, not that it's necessarily the best decision to buy those things on credit, um, but when I think of that large number, I think, wow, that can't possibly all be uh, the nice-to-haves. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think there is a misconception. Mm. Uh, you would have to agree that, well, I would think you would agree. There is a misconception that it is the toys. It is the, the big TVs and the entertainment centers. Well, it's... Again, you know, your numbers are borne out by the uh, clients that we see as well. I mean, we have over 2,500 people on our debt repayment program, mm -hmm. and average debt would be about $26,000, $27,000. So, and that can be payday loans, cell phone bills, uh, so any utilities, arrears, things like that. Of course. Um, obviously, credit cards, overdrafts, loans, uh, all of these things factor in. Most of the time, people who have car loans, obviously you want to keep your car and, and you know, so while you may have that, mm -hmm. that's not something that, you know, you're in crisis on. And so when we see people who are going on our debt repayment program with about $26,000, typically that does not include the car loan. It does not include the mortgage. So, you know, again, it goes back to the credit card bills and, and things like that. Right. Either way, I mean, the fact that the average Canadians carry about 27,000 in debt, we're clearly pretty comfortable uh, carrying a lot of debt and in some cases even increasing it. What is it about people? Uh, is it a mentality? Is it uh, poor education uh, that sees so many Canadians carrying such a, you know, a fairly heavy debt load? I think there's a few root causes to this issue and for me I think maybe we're comfortable with it but it's it may be time for a wake-up call too because mm -hmm. it's a pretty big number. Yeah. The access to credit is really, really readily available for people of all income levels. If yes. you're looking for more credit, it's available. And credit, I should emphasize, is a tool. It's not all bad. Sometimes credit's an appropriate tool for a purchase. Mm -hmm. um, but we have just the easiest access, and a lot of that easy access is high interest. Definitely. And so I think what accompanies that is a lower awareness of what the true cost of buying something on credit really is. If you're buying a good on a, low, a high interest credit card and mm -hmm. paying the minimum payment, that's going to cost a lot of money down the road. And that's the way it seems to go a lot of the time. Absolutely. Um, I did a session before Christmas on credit card debt. Mm -hmm. And uh, one, of, one of the things that people are not aware of is that on your credit card statement now, the government mandates that they put down how long it would take to repay your balance mm -hmm. with only the minimum monthly payment. And so we see clients coming in, and I'm sure you do as well, Carolyn, where the repayment term on the minimum monthly payment is like you know, 40, 50, 60 years. Crazy. And you know, it's crazy. So yeah. we encourage people, okay, well, you need to reduce that interest rate however you can. You know, get a lower card with fewer benefits on it, yeah. but anything you can do to reduce that interest rate and accelerate your payments to pay it off earlier is, you know, hey, it's money in the bank. And I do, I want to touch a little bit more on credit cards in just a few moments here. Uh, is it ingrained in North American society uh, to live beyond our means? And I'm talking about those, not necessarily that are coming for debt counseling, but those who are buying the toys mm. on credit and need to keep up with the Joneses. Is that unique to North America? And, and if so, why is that happening? So we were talking about this before, you know, we uh, got into the studio. And, you know, I think what, I don't, I don't think it is just unique to North America. I think this is a oh, worldwide phenomenon. Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of it, uh, you know, Carolyn touched on the whole issue of ease of access to credit. I mean, you can't go anywhere without, here, do you want to fill out this application? Do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? I mean, sure. it's everywhere. But the other thing is that the, the peer pressure of, you know, somebody calls you up and say, hey, Kevin, let's go out for dinner or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Are in Calgary, again, everybody wants to be successful and you want to, you know, have that persona that yeah mm -hmm. I'm doing really well 
you could be maxed out. How are you going to say to somebody, hey, sorry, I can't afford it? Mm -hmm. You're just going to put up more on your credit card and you're going to you go know, out. And it ties in as well with you know, your social capital. Mm -hmm. You need to be at these you know, dinners, these parties for whatever. Maybe it's a business thing, Absolutely. networking, yep. whatnot. I imagine it is a bit of stress on you know, many people in that position.